my last SQL Server Quickie, I talked about the isolation level read committed. As you have learned, read committed doesn't give you a so-called read stability. When you read a record multiple times within a transaction, it can be the case that you get back different versions of the same record. This behavior is possible because the shared logs are immediately released when you read the record. Therefore, some other data modification transactions can acquire an exclusive log on that record and change it. If you want to achieve a read stability, SQL Server provides the isolation level repeatable read. With repeatable read, you can read a record multiple times within your transaction and you will get back always the same version, hence the name repeatable read because you have repeatable reads. Let's switch now over to the flip chart where I want to describe to you how this isolation level works internally. In my previous SQL Server Quickie, I have already mentioned that we have no read stability in the default isolation level of read committed. Imagine again, we have our three records. As we have said, last month we read our record we acquire the shared log when we have read that record we release the shared log same thing happens for the second record same thing happens for the third record when you have now another transaction a data modification like an update statement the update statement once and the update statement can also acquire very very easily the exclusive log because nobody else has a shared log on that record means when you read those records again it can be the case that you're getting back for record 2 some other information means you have read that record multiple times within your same transaction but you got back different versions means you have no read stability. If you want to see the same version of that record, the same information, you have to use the isolation level repeatable read because with repeatable read SQL Server provides you a read stability. Imagine again we have our three records. When we now run our select statement, our reader in the isolation level repeatable read, things are changing. We acquire our shared log when we read that record, but we don't release that shared log anymore because we are holding those shared logs till the end of our transaction. And finally, when you perform a commit or rollback, those shared logs are released. Imagine now what happens when we are running again our update statement. In that case, we can't acquire that exclusive lock because there's an incompatible shared lock on that record means we have to wait means in that case a reader blocks a writer means we have achieved a read stability nobody else can change our records in the meantime because the shared lock just blocks the exclusive lock so that's the internal behavior of repeatable read. We are just holding our shared logs till the end of our transaction. Let's switch now over to SQL Server Management Studio where I want to show you this behavior with a concrete example. In this demonstration, I again use one session for a data modification statement and another session for a simple select statement. The difference in today's quickie is that in our reading session we set the transaction isolation level to repeatable read. Therefore, SQL Server acquires the necessary shared logs during the select statement, but only releases them at the end of our transaction. Now let's start a new transaction. Now when we read records through the select statement, the acquired shared logs are no longer released. They are just held during our complete transaction. When you now try to change the same records from a different session, our update statement just blocks. 
The update statement tries to acquire exclusive locks on the rules, but they are already locked with some shared locks. Therefore, the reader, the select statement, blocks the writer, the update statement. It's exactly the opposite way around from last month when we had a blocking situation in the read committed isolation level. When we now look again into the lock manager's hash table with the dynamic management view system to analogs, you can see that our first session just waits for an exclusive lock. And that exclusive lock is blocked by the shared lock that was acquired from the select statement. The select statement itself acquired in this example 12 different shared locks. But we have only returned 6 rows from the query. You may be asking now why we have acquired twice as many locks as the number of rows that we got back. The answer to that question is very simple. When you look at the execution plan of the select statement, you can see that SQL Server has performed a so-called bookmark lookup operation. Therefore, we have acquired shared logs on every returned row in the non-clustered index and also on every read row in the clustered index. If you have here a concurrent write activity on your clustered and non-clustered index, it is very easy to get into a so-called bookmark lookup deadlock. I have already talked about this specific deadlock in SQL Server Quickie number 5. If you would provide here a covering non-clustered index, you would also avoid the shared logs in the clustered index. Therefore, you can even improve blocking situations by working on your indexing strategy. In this SQL Server Quickie, you have seen how the isolation level repeatable read works internally and how SQL Server can achieve a read stability with this isolation level. During the demonstration, you have also seen how easy it is to get into a blocking situation where a reader blocks a writer. In next month SQL Server Quickie, we will continue the discussion about the various isolation levels in SQL Server and I will show you the isolation level read uncommitted. Stay tuned until next month. Try to change the same records from a different session. <laughs>